Well, hello there, everyone. After a few days off from doing wrestling videos, I'm back. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, feeling good. Can't believe I'm saying this. Looking forward to Raw this week. Looking A. Come back in a couple days and be like, why the hell did I say that? Anyways, so the time has come. It's Monday. You know what that means. OTRS Central Q&A time. Outstanding stuff. Let's dive right in. Just like we would into Trish Stratus's muff. All right, get serious. Do you think The Rock will help Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? There's probably a very good chance that that happens. Um, you know, that would seem to be the way, the direction that they're going. You would think, as if you're going to actually have The Rock there at WrestleMania, it doesn't sound like he's going to be working a match, unfortunately. So you're going to have some type of role. That's probably what we're looking at at this point. And I don't know if that's going to be enough to save that main event. Only God can save that main event, baby. Um, let's see here. It's Johnny Russo. What did? What do you think of Shane O'Mac taking a subliminal shot at God by mentioning his three sons? Well, Shane O'Mac brings the chromosome, baby. Here comes the sons. Here comes the sons. Son, 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 sons. Dollar, 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 dollar. Except for the fact Triple H is still the WWE World Heavyweight Champion and is God. He can take all the subliminal shots he wants. Shane O'Mac is back, baby. And that's an awesome thing. It's McMahon FTW all over the goddamn product and company. He can take all the shots he wants. And yes, that's nice that he can produce three sons. You know, Triple H produced three daughters. Damn it! Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. He's God, but he just doesn't have that chromosome, unfortunately for him. Uh, let's see here. Chewy Second Dad. Conspiracy Theory. Could Shane O'Mac herald the end of the PG era? <laughs> this is like one of these reptilian people conspiracies. Oh, my God. Christ Almighty. <laughs> is Shane O'Mac coming back? Mean the return of the attitude. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. That's so conspiracy theory. I don't think so. Uh, let's see here. Michael Corvin. In a one-on-one -on -one situation game, both men in their prime, who wins between LeBron James and Michael Jordan? One-on-one. -on -one. Who do you think? Jordan. So people sleep on how strong Jordan was in his prime. Sure, he wasn't LeBron's size, but when we talk about actual skill... Superior defensive ability, uh, killer instinct mindset. I mean, let's put it this way. A one-on-one -on -one game to 21, you know, the universe is at stake. One of them has saved the universe from basketball-playing aliens called the Monstars, and it wasn't LeBron James! Michael Jordan carried Bugs Bunny and worthless-ass Bill Murray to a victory! I'll take Jordan all goddamn day of the week. Jimmy Purifoy with Brie Bella retiring after WrestleMania. What do you think will happen to Nikki Bella when she returns? I know what's not going to happen. Her getting impregnated by John Cena with a son. Ha <laughs> ha! I don't know. They'll probably try to force her down your throat as a face and nobody will care. Let's see here. I am AF250. Why do you hate Dolph Ziggler so much? Um, You know, it's something you got to feel. It's something you got to have deep inside of you. But really, at the end of the day, when it comes to Dolph Ziggler, I'm sorry, at this point in time, what the fuck is there to like? The dude's been doing this shit for over a goddamn decade now. And he still fucking sucks. I'm sorry he does. You know, I can see why people like CM Punk. For God's sakes, he could actually cut a promo. He actually had personality. He had that charisma where he could connect to the audience. Daniel Bryan had a personality. Had charisma. Wasn't as good in the mic as CM Punk, but there was something about Daniel Bryan. He had a way to engage people and get them emotionally invested. And Daniel Bryan also showed some versatility and depth of talent as a performer and as a character to be able to do different things and make them work and get them the fuck over. What the fuck has Dolph Ziggler ever really truly fucking gotten over? All these years later, he's still a bad version of badass Billy Gunn. He does far fewer suspect things than Billy Gunn used to do, and yet still it comes across as far more suspect. Guy Liner, need I say any fucking thing more? His outfits are fucking ridiculous. He flops around like a jackass. 
If I want people that can do a bunch of flips and kicks, there are people, frankly, that are better at it, that sell in a more appropriate fashion and do a better job of putting on a more compelling, interesting match that actually bothers to tell a fucking story. Dolph Ziggler sucks, and I'm glad people are starting to get tired of him. If he don't care, why the hell should you? Oh, uh, W. Rain Foster Podcast. Your thoughts on Leo finally winning an Oscar? Well... If Black America wasn't going to get any representation at the Oscars, maybe Leo's the closest thing they could get. However, I think one hose job in place that Black America will clearly agree with me. If you weren't going to give us some Black nominees, you could have at least had Sylvester Stallone win for Best Supporting Actor. You give it to who gives a fuck for whatever the fuck movie that nobody fucking cares about. That's horse shit. It's great Leo finally won the Oscar. Long since deserved. Long overdue. He finally got it. That's his reward for, spoiler alert, taking it up the ass from a bear. Uh, you have your opinions on this scene, and I'll have mine. But at the end of the day, I'm happy for him. He should have fucking won. It was about time. But Sylvester Stallone not winning for Creed is an abomination of justice, period. Ahmed, do you believe that WWE will really use more violence as a way to build to WrestleMania? You'd have to think so. I mean, they did the whole shit with Reigns bleeding. You know, they're building up to... A freaking hell in a cell match between The Undertaker and Shane McMahon. They've got a no-holds-barred street fight between Brock Lesnar and Dean Ambrose. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some type of special stipulation thrown in there for Triple H and Roman Reigns. Maybe even outside of having a special guest referee, somebody in their corner, what have you. Uh, yeah, I think they will use a little more violence because you got to throw everything at it. You've got to throw everything at it because of what you're trying to do, the importance of the show, the venue, everything. You know, they have to compensate for what they're lacking in certain ways in terms of overall star power and overall appeal of the current roster, overall storytelling. They've got to do what they can, and that's one of the ways to do it. Uh, Mr. Tuxedo, do you think Shane will be gone again after WrestleMania? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure where they're really going with this. I most certainly hope that's not the case, uh, but we'll see. W. Rain Foster Podcast, can Shane versus Taker be a win-win situation? I don't know for me. It's almost like it's lose-lose, damn it. I think arguably every WrestleMania match for Taker now is kind of a lose-lose proposition in the sense that the streak is already over, so why does Taker still continue to work at Mania? But at the same point in time, he is Taker. You really don't want to see him lose at WrestleMania. So if he loses at WrestleMania, it stinks. And if he wins at WrestleMania, it kind of stinks. And so what does it mean for the other person? You know, could you make it into a win-win situation? You know, There's a part of me that still wonders if Shane McMahon is just a placeholder that if Cena actually got healthy by the time Mania rolled around, that it wouldn't be Cena in this spot taking the place of Shane? You know, I wonder, I wonder. Uh, w the WWE fan, what are the chances of Triple H beating Roman at WrestleMania? I think they are slim and none, but he will conquer still, and he will win the hearts and minds and souls of all the people, even if he technically no longer holds the title at the end of the night. Casey Morris, thoughts on Lesnar getting a title shot in a three-way versus God and Wyatt, even though he lost at Fastlane. Who the fuck did Bray Wyatt come into this equation? Fuck Bray Wyatt. Uh, nah, I'm happier with uh, them going in the Lesnar-Ambrose direction. Uh, let's see here. Jason Barksley, ever miss Mr. Rout and the other guys in Iowa? Absolutely. Because it's just not the same when you watch wrestling by yourself. And those of you that used to watch in groups or do watch in groups now, that used to watch on your own or have to watch on your own now, you know what I'm talking about. It's just not the same experience. Part of the fun of watching wrestling is watching with a group of wrestling fans because you do all types of fun shit. And it was fun to watch wrestling with Tony and Mikey and Mark and Dwayne, the Green Meanie, B-Rad, are you fucking kidding me? In terms of as a wrestling fan, that to me, even though it wasn't always the best product, that was the best period of time of my life as a wrestling fan, being able to watch it with those guys. Because, man, we had a lot of fucking fun. And no matter how much I try now, I just can't duplicate or replicate that. And that's just the truth of the matter. Um, yeah, oh, how do you feel about WWE putting out an edgier product during WrestleMania season? Um, I like I referenced a little earlier, I think they have to. I think they have no choice. And I'm okay with it. Because there's a lot of stakes here. There's a lot on the line here. You have to go. As I talked about before, especially when it comes to WrestleMania, I'm always of the philosophy. And actually, I think Vince and I are kind of in lockstep in this case. Is It's all hands on deck, and it's anything fucking goes. Anything you have to do, whatever it takes. 
And this year, that could be whatever it takes. They have to go there, even if it's kind of conflicting with a, a long-term vision of what they are. You, know, you got people saying ass and bitch. You got Vince saying the F word and all this, but you still try to present yourself a family friendly. Who are you? What are you trying to be? You know, I don't know. Uh, Paul Thomas the third. Are you going to do a combine winners and losers video? Uh, on that Schleg Daddy TV channel, I do a mock draft pretty much every week. I think that's where you'll hear me talk of some about combine winners and losers. I don't know if I'll do specific videos about that. Um, you know, and I'm still uh, in the process of grading out individual prospects for the 2016 NFL draft. Uh, so th that's probably where I'll talk more about that than in a video and in on itself. Alex Dredge, what do you think about the recent rumors of the return of the WWE brand split? And do you think it could work? What the hell would they want to do a brand split? I just, no. Book your ship better. Write your ship that you've got now better. No, a brand split? Just no. No, 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 no. Because that could lead to a splitting of the title? No. Just, just God, no. Alex Tassan. Is Shane more suited to be in the main event of WrestleMania as Reigns Enforcer? And if he wins, Shane has total control of Raw. Um... You know, in, in the grand scheme of things, from a storyline standpoint, Shane McMahon's return really doesn't make a whole lot of fucking sense. Let's just call it as we see it. Um, but you get caught up in certain other things, and, and you overlook that. Um, but in terms of uh, his spot on the card, yeah, I can't lie. There's a part of me that's kind of torn on what to feel about Shane versus Taker at WrestleMania, whereas Shane being in the quarter of Roman... You know, could feel like overkill to fans and they could really grow to resent it, but it probably wouldn't hurt being associated with Shane. Um, that might have been a more effective spot for him than even having The Rock doing it. Uh, the Ben Wardy, who would you have play Chris Benoit in the Chris Benoit movie? Ooh, really interesting choice there. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody like a Tom Hardy? I'd have to think about that one. That's a really good question. Evan Voorhees, does WWE need to do another brand split as I referenced earlier? God, no. They need to they need to shrink the brand, not expand the brand and split the brand, in my opinion. Uh, Dakota, did you? How did you get back into running and exercising? First day back to the gym myself. Actually, I've sloughed off on that a little bit. I was having some issues with uh, my back stiffening up. And then my foot was bothering me, so I had to take some time off. March 1st, I'll start back up again. Uh, honestly, the problem is, like for me, I'll be 35 on upcoming in March. And I think part of the problem is, is that I'll still think at times that I'm 16, 17, eight years, 18 years old. And I'll think I could just dive right into something and it's not going to cause me any problems. And, you know, I don't do the proper warm-up techniques. I don't do the proper dynamic stretching before I work out. You know, I, I, sometimes it can be a real challenge because you think about what you used to be and you don't always think about the reality of who you are. You know, I can still be really effective who I am at this age, but I have to be smarter about it. I have to treat the entire process as one part of one workout and one whole workout as a whole from the proper stretching, the proper warm-ups to the proper workouts and having a plan a proper cool down. I think another challenge is, is understanding that my body at this age, there are days where I feel outstanding and days I'm going to feel like total shit. Days I feel like I'm 24. Days I feel like I'm 44. Days I even feel like I'm 54. And other days maybe I feel like I'm 34. And I have to be able to understand that and adjust as a result. And on those days where I'm not really feeling it, whereas 15, 20 years ago, I would have still plowed my way through it and forced my way through it and been able to recover effectively and been fine. Now I have to recognize that, hey, maybe I'm not feeling it on this day and I need to back off and that's the best thing I can do. Get some rest and recovery for my body so that next day maybe I feel really, really good. I can go in on it. You know, and I think in terms of running and exercising, you know, part of it, you got to get back on a diet. My diet is still not very good and I need to rectify that because I can sit there and do all of the, all the plyometrics in the world. I can start doing strength training again. I can sit there and do a lot of speed work. You know, I can hit the right type of uh, high intensity interval training, all these different things. But if I'm not putting the right type of energy and fuel into my body, it's kind of counterproductive. Um, I would say in terms of the key to me to getting back into running and exercising, start by walking. And people talk about that and think that's a lame way to do it. No, that's a smart way to do it and the right way to do it and slowly build your body up. You know, especially if you're not in a competitive environment in terms of high school, college, you know, you're just doing it for yourself. Start out very, very slow. You know, every day do something a little bit more. 
you know, build upon something, progress, doing different types of workouts to work out different types of uh, muscles, different types of energy systems within your body. Too many times you have those people that want to be long distance runners and they just run long distances all the time and they will occasionally do certain types of tempo work and that's it. They won't mix in intervals. They won't mix in VO2 max training. They won't mix in the high inter intensity interval training. They won't work in the speed work, the plyometric work, and you need a combination of all of that. And, you know, you got to work those different energy systems and you got to know how to do that. So actually, as of March 1st tomorrow, I'll be starting back out. Now, am I going to start off with walking? No, um, because I still have some base from when I was still running a couple of months ago. Uh, but will I start off with shorter, more intense work, focusing on technique, which is very, very important? Yes. Will I start off by trying to strengthen up my core? You're goddamn right, because if I don't do that, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, Andrew Paolo, but good luck to you, Dakota. Did you, uh, as you get back to the gym, uh, if you could sign another N New Japan Pro Wrestling wrestler for the WWE, who would it be next? Probably nobody. You know, you sit there and throw a bunch of names and a bunch of uh, guys at it, but you know, just use the talents that you have better first. Uh, D Styles three four three. Why do you always complain? You know that's a good question. I don't know if you expect to be pissed off at the question, but I think it's a very fair question. Uh, I think it's kind of a funny question too, ironically enough. Uh, I think there's a valid point to that. Um, I think it's our human nature. Because let's face it, if I'm complaining about the product all the time, then you also have those fans that are complaining about the fans who are complaining about the product all the time and complaining about the way certain people are complaining. Eh, we're fans. We complain about shit. We're humans. We complain about shit. We gravitate to negativity, and that is the truth of the matter, my man. So fair, fair question. Fair question, I think. But at the end of the day, it's just one of these things that is just who I am. You know, and sometimes com you call it complaining, and sometimes that's a valid criticism, and sometimes it could be effective critiquing. You know, not everything is going to be perfect or sunshine, and nor should we act like it's always perfect or sunshine. Um, you know, and it, I, I think that's just the way you got to kind of look at it is sometimes things are not always rosy, and nor should we pretend that they are always rosy. Uh, L I L or Little DJ Boy, what are the key points of a wrestler being buried? Um, taking somebody who maybe has a push, is getting some momentum, and then inexplicably taking away things like microphone time, uh, taking them from feature segments to bear, putting them in the middle of the show, taking them from winning matches to all of a sudden they're losing matches to all of a sudden you're doing things to seem like go out of your way to emphasize that they're not good in certain areas to the point where you try to intentionally sabotage and kill all of their momentum to where you take them off of television. You know, those are the ways you bury somebody. And I look at Cesaro, you know, when he coming off of WrestleMania 30, he's won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. You know, and the, the timing is now people want to get behind him. You've got babyface momentum. So some dumb dick decided we're going to align him with fucking Paul Heyman. We're going to take all the momentum away from Cesaro by fucking aligning him with Paul Heyman. And no, that wasn't good. That was fucking stupid. And I told you back then it was stupid. And it really looks stupid now, doesn't it? All oh, Cesaro was done. Used as, at that point in time, was as an excuse to keep Paul Heyman on television because it was ultimately about Brock Lesnar. And then you split off Cesaro, don't really give him a reason or a purpose, and you change his character from heel to face, heel to face, meaning you don't give a fuck. You give him inconsistent television time. You don't really give him much in terms of an emphasis, a focus, or a push. That's an example, many examples of being buried. Hey, Alex Riley was an example of being buried. You know, so many other guys have been examples of being buried, and it's frustrating. Big Baby, if you were the Cavs, do you want Golden State, Oklahoma City, or the Spurs? I probably want the, the Thunder first, because, yes, they've got Russell and Westbrook, or, excuse me, Russell Westbrook and uh, Kevin Durant, um, but I feel the best about my chances of beating them. Then it would be the Spurs, just because I think they could play a style similar and maybe you could get them with star power. I don't want any part of Golden State whatsoever if I'm the Cavs. Um, let's see here. John Roy. Uh, do you think it would be good for the brand split to return because it will give us a reason to watch SmackDown? No, I do not. I do not. And, again, I do not want the brand split. Uh, in the Rub Show, we'll close us out with a political question. Oh, boy. I get it. They've been feeling the burn for a while, so what the fuck? Let's humor them. Are you in favor of Bernie Sanders' health care for all plan? And what are your thoughts on him in general? I think I've touched on this before, but I'll touch on it again now. That's perfectly fine. Um, 
there are aspects of Bernie Sanders that I like. There are things about him that I really like. In general, I like that he seems to be very principled. I like some of his viewpoints. Uh, I like the thought of having a higher minimum wage, although I think $15 an hour is completely ridiculous. 10 to 11, I think, is a more effective middle ground without creating any negative, you know, mass kind of uh, panic or mass kind of problems within a ripple effect of the economy as a whole. Um, you know, there are things I like about him. Probably one of the best, actually, is that single-payer health care system. I, I think here's the thing, is that when people will talk about, well, his uh, so democratic socialism, his spending will blow up the budget and create huge deficits, well, what the fuck are we doing now that's any different? And at the end of the day, here's my biggest problem. When people talk about the national debt, it's when they talk about taxes. The, the whole focus and emphasis is just fucking ridiculous. And so many people are such big idiots about this. It, when it comes to taxes, for example, is it a problem that we're getting taxed or we have nothing to show for what we're being taxed for? And also, is it the level that we're getting taxed? Because we'll focus on that federal tax rate. We're not focusing on the fact that not only is there a payroll tax for you know income tax, you've also got Medicare tax, you've got Social Security tax, and you've got your state taxes. And then when you go buy shit, you've got local taxes. When you pay your utility bills, there are federal surcharges. When you look at the amount of income that you initially are supposed to get, and look, compare that to your effective overall tax rate and the effective actual income net that you actually have, it's ridiculous and it's astounding. Astounding. That's the problem, along with the tax system where we sit there and somebody pays in maybe $500 or $1,000 in terms of income tax throughout the course of the year, and because they popped out a baby or two, we're going to subsidize that. We're subsidizing people having bastard kids, and that's the truth of the matter. And we're giving them five, dollars $6,000 back. What type of fucking business philosophy is that? They've paid in this much, so we're going to pay them back four, five, six times, if not more, of a return. Does that make sense to any fucking buddy whatsoever? How is that system ever going to be financially solvent? How is that system ever going to potentially turn to profit or even break even? It's impossible. It can't because we create a system of dependence. And my thing is, is we're creating a cycle and a system of dependence without creating good reasons to have a system or a cycle of dependence. Healthcare for all would be one of those things that I would be okay with, and here's why. Because at least we can point to a lot of spending fixing something. You know, because now I pay taxes, but I also have to pay healthcare premiums. On top of that, I also have to pay for out-of-pocket expenses. So maybe if it was one of those things where you just tax me a little bit more, but I didn't have to pay for those other things, it would be a net win for me and for a lot of other people. And furthermore, if we're going to talk about the national debt, you know, either you've got Democrats that are going to spend it on social programs and explode the debt, or you're going to have Republicans that are going to sit there and military spend their ass into fucking oblivion. It doesn't matter. My issue with the debt being almost 19 trillion, whatever the fuck, dollars it is, I don't even fucking know anymore, I don't care, is that it's like somebody that rock, racks up a lot of debt on their credit cards. Is it the fact that they have the debt alone, or is it the fact that they have the debt and they have nothing to show for it? Is it the fact that people have 50, 75, 100 k in student loan debt, or is it the fact that a lot of those people that have that student loan debt didn't get a degree that was commensurate with ever accumulating that type of student loan debt to begin with to where they were never really going to be able to effectively pay that off. Did they even bother finishing their, their degree? Do they have anything to show for it? If our debt was that much, but we had quality education for all, which we don't have, if we had safe drinking water for all, which we don't have, if we had a quality top-notch world-class infrastructure, which we don't have, if we had, again, health care for all, we had secured borders, if we had, you know, more cures for cancer and better treatments for other diseases. I don't I could give a fuck less about that $19 trillion, $20. It could be a hundred trillion dollars. Let's play pay the interest on it until a fucking oblivion. Who gives a shit? Because we've got something quantitative and tangible to show for it. Instead, the problem is we have nothing to show for it. And again, that Obamacare reform was a fucking joke to me because instead of actually fixing the issues, he did a couple of nice things, allowing kids to be covered by their parents until they're, what, 25, 26, eliminating uh, bans of uh, coverage due to pre-existing conditions. Those are good things. But again, we're still allowing major insurance companies to fucking play both ends of the spectrum. We're going to control and manipulate the prices here, and we're also going to sit there and control and manipulate the medical malpractice insurance business, and we're going to control it from the patient standpoint, the hospital and doctor standpoint, and what a fucking mess it truly is. Obamacare to me was like one big giveaway to the fucking insurance companies. 
which is ironic because it was originally 20 years ago a Republican health care plan. It was the counter to Bill and Hillary's universal health care plan, that single-payer system. When people talk about Obama being some fucking far-left liberal and all this other shit, there are times that I sit there and say, what in the fuck are you talking about? He instituted a Republican health care system. He fucking has spent tons of money on the military still. He hasn't closed Guantanamo. He killed Osama bin Laden. He's had, even though he's pulled out of other places, he's put troops in other places. He's done all these fucking Republican things. If anything, he's just been a mediocre Republican president and a very bad liberal president at that. And disappointing to me nonetheless. Bernie Sanders, though, at the end of the day, I don't support, and here's why. Because you're talking about a guy that's 73, what, 74? By the time he'd be president, he'd be almost 75 years of age. No, age does matter. And I don't give a shit about he's healthy enough. No, we need to stop being run by our parents and our grandparents' fucking generation. We need to stop being run by people that are out of fucking touch. I don't think Sanders is out, as out of touch as, let's say, a Donald Trump or a Hillary Clinton or a Ted Cruz or a Marco Rubio, mind you, but still out of touch nonetheless. You know, the ultimate outsider who's happened to have been an insider for two-plus decades now, and if we go back to his days of being mayor of Burlington, Vermont, three-plus decades, he's been a political insider for years. You know, I just... The only reason I would vote for him would be in a general, elec general election... And it was because Donald Trump was on the other ticket. That'd be it. It's not to sit there and say that I'm a Hillary Clinton supporter because I dislike her tremendously. I do not understand why so many people think that she is some type of reformer. If you are a union member and you vote for Hillary and you like the union, you are a fucking moron because she has worked for years against unions. Do your research, her work on the corporate board of Walmart, her work for many years as an attorney for Walmart, which is supposed to be one of the big enemies of unions out there, yet union people support Hillary fucking Clinton because they're fucking stupid. And frankly, I don't understand why so many black Americans would support Hillary Clinton either. You know, you could argue in certain ways that the Clinton administration of the 90s was a disaster for them, that getting tough on crime that led to disproportionate members, numbers, excuse me, of young black males in particular being incarcerated for nonviolent offenses. By the way, something that Bernie Sanders once supported as well, that a lot of the people who want to feel the burn don't bother to feel the fucking research to do. Why the fuck would you support Hillary Clinton? If you think that the banks are corrupt and you don't like the fact that the odds are stacked against you as a common man, because frankly, they fucking are. You go and try to create a system where somebody gives you a dollar and you can make nine dollars out of it. What we call our fractional reserve system, not our bullshit fiat money system. Hillary Clinton is in the pockets of the fucking banks. At least I'll say this for Donald Trump. He's not in anybody's pocket because he doesn't need to be in anybody's fucking pocket because he's got pockets of his own damn. That's about all there is that's admirable and likable about him, the fact that he actually speaks his mind. But once you get to that, in terms of policy and everything else, diarrhea, need I say more. Um, if people want to, if they're Democrats and they want to support Bernie, I can much more easily understand why you would support Bernie from a philosophical and a um, kind of a principle standpoint. If you support Hillary Clinton to me, it's just all about the general election and it's all about trying to make sure Donald Trump doesn't win. And, and, you know, it's one of those things. If you're going to support Hillary Clinton, just vote for me. Vote for me. What the hell you guys at In The Rope Show should be doing? You should be voting for me. I'll be 35 in March. I'll be old enough to run for president. Vote for me. I understand what it's like to be the common man because at times in my adult life and through my childhood, I looked up to the common man because I wish I could be there. I have a fundamental understanding of these things that none of these candidates fucking do. They are ridiculously out of touch. And yet we continue to support the same assholes. Thanks for all your questions, guys. I'll see you later.